right. Let's get our Tiki Money Tiki statue and our pile of cash. And here comes Fluff. He wants to get in on the video. Today's video. Uh oh. Uh oh. So, uh, in yesterday's video, I talked about wanting to add currency from other countries to our pile. And then I remembered that I had a few, like, old money stashed away <laughs> and I found them I pulled them out and so this is old money from the days when I was living overseas as a kid the first one here is uh, put our coin here Oops, put this right here let me put this right there so the first one, if you can see, rupees, one rupee from the days when I, 1967 is, this is very old. I was a student going to Cody Canal and uh, I kept the, I guess I kept the money from those days. And I remember I, one day I had these uh, like, 10 years ago or so, showed them to a, an Indian couple who were visiting their family members here in the United States. And I showed them these rupees and they said, these are now uh, obsolete, out of circulation. The, the money looks different now. So these are the, the rupees from a long time ago. 1967. Okay, and then this one is Bahrain Currency Board. So th for me, this is interesting that Bahrain, first of all, it's lots of oil on their money, and on this side it's English, and on this side it's Arabic. And this, they, that's an old Dow. They have the old imagery on the Arabs, Arabic side. And I, I used to know the Arabic numbers because we lived in Dahran, Saudi Arabia. I've forgotten the Arabic numbers. I have to look it up. So if I could find that, I could get the year, maybe get the year off of there. And this money, I don't know. I can't remember where it's from or who is this world leader. Uh, where is this from? Maybe somebody in the viewers out there, you understand this language. You recognize it. You know who this person is. And uh, you can read it. There's the castle. Or maybe the emperor's home. And then this money is really interesting. It goes all the way back to, I had to look it up. Where's my notes? The Shah of Iran, Mohammed Reza Pahlavi. He was the Shah of Iran from 16 September 1941 until suddenly overthrown on 11 February 1979 in the Islamic Revolution. So this money definitely is out of circulation and I have to do something about it. It's falling apart. I would like to preserve it. But if somebody out there knows how to read the numbers, they can maybe tell us what year it was on this side. What have we got here? A dam? This is Ray Rials, Rials, 50 Rials. And here's another Shah of Iran. Look. This 
is probably the date right there. One hundred. This a one hundred. Bank. Markazi, Iran. That looks like an oil refinery to me. Hmm. Anyways, we're gonna keep these for today's tapping and uh, you know video. in the way there's our capping thing from our book. The substitute Babu is here and dressed Jennifer up nicely and at Joanne's insistence made two ponytails on top of Joanne that stuck out like two horns. They have gone for an afternoon stroll. Joanne is at long last being sweet. She still has bad moments but on the whole is a different child. Now Jennifer is getting up pretty headstrong at times, but not so that one can't control her. All right. And let's well, get upset because I have to move in. a cat there's a comfort zone that's why I like cats I like to live with cats I love living with cats you know people are always saying get out of your comfort zone but it's okay to be in a comfort zone <laughs> from my point of view
So the Shah of Iran, wow, suddenly overnight, he had all that power. And suddenly on, what was the date? February 11, 1979, his world changed dramatically. It can happen. It does happen. Always happens. In fact, chances are pretty high. I did a journey uh, with to money spirit before starting this video, and I asked about that. You know that suddenly a person can have all this like the flow of power and wealth and suddenly it drains away it's like the uh, the plug is pulled and the bath water drains out something like that and they are saying they mentioned the spirit money uh, money of spirit said that we are witnessing these events right now in the world and you don't know who they are referring this is a reference to I don't want to say the name but I think I know who's experiencing this sudden draining, draining of power, draining of wealth. And anyways, it doesn't matter because these are, this video is meant to be timeless, can be viewed any, any day of the year, any decade. We're going to find out. So, if it's happening to a particular person right now, world leader, like the Shah of Iran, well, that's right now, but in the future it'll be a different world leader. So let's uh, leave that open. Something else. Hmm. Oh, so if you've been following these videos since the beginning, I mentioned, like, I had this feeling when I read the, uh, came across this book of letters uh, excerpts that I was looking through the excerpts for a clue as to when I may have come across an Indonesian shaman. And one of the videos I watched back when I was researching the sockeyes, there are, I learned that there are uh, medicine men, probably to this day, I'm sure of it, who are weather shamans. And what they do, because the rain is so abundant in Indonesia, not a, like not, they don't have droughts like we do in California. Um, these weather shamans are hired to ward off rain around outdoor events like a wedding maybe or a party 
you know, or a celebration of some kind or a big meeting, outdoor meeting. And the, uh, they had, I, I looked up the, I saw a video, I can put a link to the video in the description box about these weather shamans. They say it's not a violation of the weather because what all they're doing is setting up a barrier around the event. They have all kinds of like little tools and effigies and you know things that they set up and they maintain this barrier around the event. The rain falls around it. <laughs> and considering all of the events that we attended when we were little kids, the public Indonesian celebrations, that's where I bet I saw a weather shaman and was impressed. You know, like I said, they, they, you can have an, uh, somebody can press on your young life at a young age and create some kind of lifelong lifelong influence on your life and that's what I am guessing no way for me to know but that's what I'm guessing is at least one of the situations I encountered as a little kid in Indonesia. Because I always have had this uh, tendency to want to work with the, wet, the rain spirit. And I have done that before, ridiculed by people when I tell them, oh, I, I got us some rain, you know, in the middle of the summer, I caused the rain because I asked for it. And then, of course, nobody believed me. And then I was doubting my own self. But there is... There are people who do that. They work with the rain spirits. So, and in this American culture, I think that's a rarity. In Indonesia, totally common. The weather shamans are everywhere. They're always having, like, in the video, if you watch it, you'll see he, this one sh weather shaman. During the pandemic, his uh, business dried up because nobody was having meetings, but he said that normally he would have, you know, two or three events scheduled a week which is a lot, <laughs> I think. One of the reasons I do these videos also is to make, to bring power animals and shamanic practitioner work to everyday people in the United States. And by doing that, someday we will be a normal part of the community. Everyday normal. Right now we're not normal part of the community. Still outside it, still 
not really accept it. Which is too bad. You know, Americans, they can make use of us. Okay. So that's today's video. We've finished one eye. And thank you for watching.